Hello, and welcome to the webinar today. I am Matt Cedarberg, co-founder of T-Splines, Inc., and thanks for joining us today to learn how to use T-Splines to model gorgeously smooth designs in minutes with less effort than with any other CAD tool, and then get photographic renders with KeyShot, formerly known as HyperShot, in seconds. The whole webinar today will be done in under a half hour, and then you'll have a chance to grab a free trial of both, of both products to try out what you just learned and start modeling and rendering attractive designs with these products. So today's webinar will be presented by Kyle Houchins, who's a T-Splines and Keyshot user, and Thomas Teeger, who's the Vice President of Marketing at Luxion, who develops Keyshot. And we're happy to have all of you here with us today. And again, the goal is, by the end of the webinar, that you will feel confident enough to download these products and start using them. So please don't be shy about asking questions during the webinar. You're all muted, so the way to ask questions and make comments is by typing the question in on the box on the side of your screen. Our team will be typing back answers throughout the webinar, and then also at the end, we will give Kyle and Thomas a chance to audibly answer questions. So with that... Uh, brief introduction, let me uh, turn the time over to uh, Kyle Houchins. Hi everybody, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to show a, a uh, very quick demo uh, on modeling here and for those of you who've seen um, the, the iron tutorial that we did a while ago, um, this is going to be a very similar workflow and it's, it's something that I'm finding the more I use T-splines, the more um, kind of powerful this workflow is uh, to, to get something really simply uh, up and rolling. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the, the, I'm in Rhino here, and I have some basic curves laid out um, over a, a reference image that I just pulled off the web. And what I'm going to be building uh, is, a, is a simple utility knife. and I'm going to try and do that very quickly here. Um, I need to get my toolbars up, uh, which should have been here, but uh, that's in the in the tools options toolbar layout menu. You'll notice here there's a T-splines uh, pick. I'll get the container up, and I'm going to use the toolbars with the text. And Basically, the way that I'm going to lay this out is a single, start with a single face. I'm going to work down here in the corner. Um, I'm going to bring up my heads up display up into the corner using the control and space bar keys, and, which is the, the hotkey for bringing that up. And then I'm going to just start with this append face tool. And Let's see. Hey, Kyle, before you get started, I, I jumped into you so quickly. Could you just maybe take a second to maybe say what T-Splines for Rhino does and why, why you're using that for this particular product? Oh, ab absolutely. Uh, T-Splines is a, is a subdivision surface modeling plugin uh, that was developed by, uh, by uh, Matt and his crew. And T-Splines allows you to build organic shapes uh, extremely quickly um, maintain G2 continuity between surfaces and, um, and enjoy all the benefits of subdivision surfacing within the, the Rhino environment. So in this particular item, um, it's very soft, kind of river stone kind of feeling uh, piece, which would be possible to do in, in Rhino using traditional tools, but not, you know, in five minutes, which is what we're going to try and pull off here. So. Um, I don't know, Matt, if you want any, to add anything to that. But, oh, yeah. Um, no, that, yeah, that's a great background. Let's, let's go ahead and start the modeling. Okay. So, so you have the, the toolbar here, which has a whole lot of stuff in it. And basically, I'm only going to use a couple of tools here. And if you come away from this webinar with nothing else, I'd like you to be able to use a few tools and start making things. And, and this is... Uh, a really effective way to start. So we're going to use this append face tool, which is going to allow us to put a single four-sided face in space. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in a single face, and I'm going to uh, start with uh, the edge selection tool. 
and I'm going to bring up my manipulator and I'm just going to alt drag the C plane icon here and I'm going to extrude out another face. Uh, just, and just to interrupt one more time, um, what Kyle's using here is we, we have some T-splines hotkeys and these are definitely things that you'll want to use if you're getting your model down to five minutes, but um, if you could even just kind of click up in the heads-up display, Kyle, to kind of show how you're able to get to the edge selection and, Absolutely. and where that came from. Absolutely. Up here in the edge, in the, in the, in the heads-up display, there's different manipulators that you, can, that you can access just by clicking on the label. And if you notice, as I click on this, we're, we're changing from edge mode to face mode to verts and then objects, which allows me to select the entire model. Um, the same way up here in the manipulator, I have a translate, I have a rotate, I have a scale, and I can hide it. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to be working on edges and verts. So I'm going to change this to edge mode, and I'm going to change this to translate. And when I click on the edge, you'll notice the manipulator comes up and allows me to move in the, in the X and Y planes uh, constrained if I click on the arrows. Or if I click on the C plane icon over here, I can move freely within the construction plane without having to worry about peeling it up in the Z uh, so that I know that it's flat. So the way that I'm going to lay this out, if you notice, there's some grip some grips in here. And I'm going to try and match my edges up roughly with the points of where those grips are. And, and I'll, show you, I'll show you why as we, as we go along. But bear with me as I just lay this out really quickly. If I click on the C-plane icon and hold down the Alt key, you'll notice I'm extruding another face out of this. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to just lay this out so that it kind of matches up with the, the same amount of detail that I'm going to kind of need when I lay this thing out. So I've laid out the top strip. I've kind of roughly followed my shape. I'm going to switch to vert mode up here by clicking. And I'm going to just bring this in to kind of roughly approximate the back of my model. So I need to add some more detail down here. And the reason that I've kind of stopped halfway is this, this, this model has some form going through here and I want, I want to have a line of, of detail through here where I can manipulate the curvature of this um, translating from the top to the bottom. This is going to have kind of a nice smooth flowing curve going this way. So that's why I've stopped here instead of coming all the way down. So to add the next row of faces, I'm going to go into edge selection mode. I'm going to double click on, a sing on, on the edge which will select all the edges here. I'm going to alt drag my C plane icon and I'm going to bring it down to approximately where I need it to be uh, in here. And I, I can adjust all of this on the fly which is one of the things that makes this great is it's, it's really flexible and I can adjust it kind of on the fly. So I have a little bit of curvature at the front of this model, so I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of line my verts up with the areas where the points or the sharpest transitions are in my grip. And kind of roughly approximate the back of this. As so. so I've got my basic shape laid out, and if I were to pull this right now and give it some thickness, I would have a really nice, smooth kind of river stone shape, but I'd be missing my grips. So I'm going to use the insert point command, and I'm going to click somewhere down here in the middle of where my grip is and somewhere up here, and I'm going to right click to accept that. And you'll notice that I've added another line. Um, if you happen to notice the, the fact that this is a T-junction, um, this is kind of where T-splines came from, the, the name T-splines, is, is it allows you to tee off an area of smaller detail into an area of larger detail, and it maintains continuity in, in through that transition there. So I'm going to quickly go and add more points, again using the insert point command, clicking two areas, right-clicking to accept. And if I go back to my vert selection, 
you'll notice that now I have more verts. And again, go to my translation mode. I can drag the seaplane icon and roughly lay this out. So most of our work is already done here. Um, if I go to my perspective view, you'll notice that this is dead flat and it kind of matches my curves. So now I'm going to add some thickness to this and give it some form. And I do that by using the Thicken tool, which I click on, pick the object, right click to accept, and then I'm just going to drag some thickness up here. And it's not terribly critical how thick you make this, just eyeball it, and you can always go back and adjust it later. So if I switch to smooth mode now, now using, using the tab hotkey or, or in the toolbar here, I can click on it. You'll notice what happens is I get a, a completely smooth shape. That's not quite what I want. This is going to be a symmetrical model. So actually I want two halves of this model mirrored across the, the construction plane. So I'm going to toggle back to box mode. And I'm going to go to face mode up here. And I'm going to select the bottom row of faces. So that I'm selecting the bottom of the model, I'll just simply hit the delete key. Notice the model's now open. And if I switch to smooth toggle now, you'll notice that I get a half with an open back. So for purposes of display here, I'm going to use a, use a, a little custom display doohickey I've got here called Oxpecker which we always get a lot of interest in because it looks great, but um, Matt has details on that. Um, and you'll notice here that I'm getting really nice highlight transitions across everything here. So most of my work is already done. So if I go to my top view, actually I'm going to apply some symmetry to this so we can work on the whole model at one time. So I'm going to pick symmetry. Again, this is now, I've used one, two, three, and then if you want to use the smooth toggle, I've only used four buttons out of this, out of this uh, toolbox here. So I'm going to pick this model, and I'm going to apply symmetry across the Z. And now I have a complete model that is, let me grab an edge here. As I update it, notice that it updates across the line of symmetry. So what I'm going to do now is just go in quickly and adjust a few things. I'm going to do this in vert mode. I'm going to pick this and I'm going to suck this in a little bit where the grips are. Notice how it's updating across the line of symmetry. And the beauty of this tool in a lot of ways, is the fact that you can design stuff on the fly. Instead of just making a CAD model or copying a drawing, you can actually design stuff as you're going, make decisions on the fly, and work with your item in a manner that's much more designerly than just building a CAD model. So we've roughed this shape out really quick. We've got great transitions. We've got great highlights. We've got a great grip profile going on here. If I go back to my top view, you notice that I'm not quite on my original lines. I don't know where my reference curves went. But um, what I want to do is sharpen this transition up a little bit, and I want to sharpen my grip transitions up a little bit. And the way to do that is to use the TS weight command, which allows you to assign uh, uh, more influence on an edge. So I'm going to select an edge here, and I'm going to select an edge here. I'm going to hover over my command line, and I'm going to just type in TS weight. Notice it appears there. 
asked me to enter a new weight. It says right now this weight is one. I'm going to change this to three. And you'll notice that this immediately sharpens up. I'm going to do the same thing for each one of these edges here, which will give me more definition on those grip, those grip edges. Try three. Notice that sharpened up. And if I pull these back up, again, this is just manipulating edges. This is not anything magical. I can very quickly match my reference image. Go back to my perspective view and take a look at it. And we have our object roughed out very, very quickly. You can obviously go in and mess with this stuff at will. You can make the back fatter or thinner or whatever you want to do. And notice, notice this highlight line. Notice how, how beautiful this transition is from the grip area up through that area of detail and then how beautifully it fades out into a really nice straight highlight line there. This is something that's so easy to do in T-splines and it's so difficult to do with traditional Rhino tools. It's one of the reasons that I really love working this way because for objects that require you know, that really high level of smoothness and, and, and the continuity that flows through the object, it's so easy to accomplish here um, with this tool that um, it really simplifies a, a lot of workflows. So let's go ahead and finish this up. At, at this point, I'm pretty much done in T-splines. Like I said, this is going to be a pretty lightweight modeling demo because I want the focus to be on, on Thomas and, and uh, Keyshot. So at this point, I'm going to convert this to a Rhino, a Rhino NURBS object, which puts us right back in Rhino where everyone is comfortable. So I'm going to just pick this. I'm going to actually right click this, I'm sorry, pick the T-spline to convert to a Rhino object. I click it. This immediately click turns into a Rhino poly surface, which you can see here in the heads-up display. And at this point, I'm going to shut off my heads-up display using the control uh, spacebar hotkey, or you can, you can click it up here, right click to hide the manipulator. I'm going to close my toolbar because I'm essentially at this point done with T-splines. I'm going to go to my top view. I'm going to hide that. So this is a Rhino poly surface now. And I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to remove some of the ISO curves so it's easier to see just by shutting off the show ISO curves in the properties. And I've got some cutters here that I'm going to project onto the surface. I'm going to pipe these using the Rhino pipe command. Let's see, that's not enough. Let's make those a little bigger. So I've got curves projected onto a surface. I've piped it. And one thing you'll notice when working with T-splines data is T-splines data converted into Rhino poly surfaces. The fidelity is really high, and Booleans and stuff tend to work really well, which is fantastic. So the only other thing that I need to do here is just bring some details into this model, which I built previously. Um, these are just NURBS objects that are imported, and if I wanted to Boolean out some shapes, I just would bring these in, cut these out, and I've got my slots and my opening for my knife and stuff like that. So the only thing that I would need to do now is just decide where my color breaks are. And by the way, this I built this I built this this little thumb thing up here the exact same way. If I if I bring my T-splines toolbar heads-up display back up and toggle smooth this, you'll notice if I go to top view, 
this is the exact same thing. This is the append place workflow. There's four here. I extruded once. I extruded again. Brought it down a little bit. I brought one face up here and added an edge and did that. And then when I toggle smooth, I get this great little thumb slider shape. And it took me about 30 seconds to make it. Last thing I need to do to break this up in order for shading is just go to the Rhino tools, right click on extract surfaces, pick the surfaces that are going to have a different texture on them, separate them out, and in this case just for display purposes I'm going to throw another aux spectra shader on here just so you can see them. And changes to a different color. And I think with my stumbling and fat fingers here, we've accomplished this in uh, what? Seven minutes? <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, at this point, I can uh, I can it's ready to texture and paint up, and so I will hand the model over to Thomas and let him show you how easy this is to make it look great in Keyshot. Okay, thank you, Kyle. Um, so now all you need to do is um, make me presenter. Okay. I guess we're good to go. You see Rhino here? Kyle, yes. You okay, perfect. All right. So, um, this, well, the handoff, as you, as you know, well, first of all, welcome, everybody. Uh, great to see you here. Uh, and thank you, Matt, for actually reaching out and having this idea of putting a joint webinar. Uh, that came together at a conference we uh, both attended uh, back in April. It was the Congress of the Future of Engineering Software, and it, um, great minds meet, and uh, here we are, four weeks later, um, having this uh, this beautiful webinar, where I think these technologies perfectly match on doing something very sophisticated um, very quickly without uh, actually any expert knowledge that is required. Okay, so what I notice here is that all of us my performance, even just rotating in Rhino, just went down the drain. I wonder why that is. Anyway, so what we do here, we have the uh, the object um, inside uh, of Rhino, just as Kyle has modeled it and shown it. Um, and uh, what I'm going to show you today is how we, how easy we can actually get that directly from Rhino into Keyshot. And uh, we haven't even announced that, but uh, we're actually not going to show the regular Keyshot that you can download from our. Uh, website today, uh, the Keyshot 1.9, but we're actually going to give you also the first official preview of Keyshot 2 that's shipping here very shortly. Um, so the one thing, the plugin actually works right away, so that's the same as today. We are offering a free plugin. You can also download that. It's really just a bridge for, between Rhino and um, uh, and Keyshot, so just simple, simple install, and then we just it comes here as plugins, Keyshot, and then we hit the render button. Uh, and there it goes uh, into Keyshot, and there we are. We actually we already finished, and that's one of those things. You know, just talking about ease of use and simplicity, just getting from one application into another. Um, there we go. That's the performance is back. Uh, there we are already. What we get is the, uh, the geometry, the color breakout as Kyle has done it. Also, if he had actually gone through and layered it and had uh, assigned the materials by layer, uh, it would have all the layer information um, uh, maintained as well. But uh, this will be uh, if it is sufficient enough here for us to go ahead and, and paint that model. If you may have also noticed, we're also getting for the perspective window, whatever window you're actually taking this information from, we also get the camera view. So that's actually quite nice, but you see how easy it is to just move the camera around. So let's make this a little more interesting. You see this is Keyshot 2. Um, well, it's the exact same um, you know, technology that you know from Hypershot and Keyshot. For those of you who have uh, been following kind of like the saga since the end of uh, last year, beginning of this year, uh, Luxion is the maker of Hypershot, the exclusive developer, it develops everything that uh, you have known about Hypershot, not only the render engine, but also the, um, um, the, the UI and everything else. Um, and uh, we have taken that and uh, built a Keyshot on it. So Keyshot 1.9 is definitely it's the same thing as Hypershot. Uh, but then Keyshot 2 is just taking it to an uh, all-new level. You see also here, now uh, we have a beautiful library, not just a uh, material library. Let me just close my uh, go-to-meeting box here so that's coming up here on the screen. 
You'll see also, uh, not just do we have the materials now visually represented, but also our environment, uh, backplates, um, that those are photographs where I can uh, combine basically 2D and 3D together. All my textures are here, and my renderings that I may have created um, throughout are also just stored right here. Hey, then, um, Thomas, Thomas, just to interrupt, could you, um, there's a little bit of, uh, the the sounds not maybe as good as it could be if you could just maybe make sure the mic is as close as possible to your mouth that would be great. Okay, okay, um, which actually it is so. But anyway, all right. okay, great, thank you. Uh, it's better. Okay, perfect. Um, so what we see here also all of our materials uh, they're nicely grouped and now let's uh, start just painting it and watch how quickly and easily that is being done. So we just grab one of our uh, metallic paints here, drag it over the object, and notice as we are hitting these surfaces, as Kyle has actually broken those out, they actually uh, trigger highlights, uh, basically. They highlight and paint the surface, but they're not uh, painted until I finally let go. So uh, let's just take this, for example. Now there you see it. Uh, that's uh, just key shot. Uh, in all its glory, as you see, immediately you see the paint applied and the reaction of this material under the real-world lighting conditions that we actually have given at this point in time. So let's uh, take this a step further and uh, paint up the rest of it. Uh, I'm just going to go maybe some uh, just some soft touch materials here. These are predefined materials that come with uh, with Keyshot, um, and you, uh, you just uh, again simply just drag that. This is a plastic, uh, just with a little bit of roughness to it. Um, then we move this camera around. We can actually take this uh, same thing here. Maybe we put that uh, right up here. I'll take the material right here. Of course, now we want to do the blade as well. The blade, um, go back to my metals, and uh, I'll just take some, some steel here and apply that. Okay. A little bit washed up, but we'll address that here in a second. Uh, we have the front here, the actual, uh, the actual edge of the knife. What else do we have? Um, can also take that material, for example, just uh, right-click on here and say, if I want to copy this material, just copy it and paste it here on the back of the material as well. So there you go. And uh, this again, copy, and uh, maybe just do a link material. Oh, it actually did that. Okay, perfect. And then the little button that we have here, um, I just take a black chrome right here. Okay, perfect. So that's how easy it is. So basically, I'm finished, and now I'm uh, basically back to almost like uh, refining it. Let's say uh, we want to check out some uh, some different lighting that we have here. So I'll just go to our environment, and that's just the beauty of it. Um, it's you know just simple lighting as lighting comes all out of the high dynamic range image, and so we just grab those and just drag that into the environment. And immediately, as I'm uh, dragging these environments, you notice how uh, this is changing just on the fly, and the materials are definitely reacting to it. So um, whatever uh, I think works best, um, you see how quickly that is. There is no effort uh, whatsoever. The great thing also about Keisha, just in, in general, is that I'm running here on a, a very basic laptop. This is a MacBook Pro 13-inch, 2.26 gigahertz uh, core to dual processor. Um, Keisha is uh, taking full advantage of uh, the CPU and all the CPU power that you have there, and uh, pegs that at 100%. So there's no need for any kind of graphics cards, uh, any kind of uh, drivers that you need. Now, just any laptop that you can buy, can buy anywhere um, will work uh, with Keyshot. So I like this, and uh, see how this beautiful blue light is actually coming in and just hitting that. Let's do a, a couple of modifications to make this a uh, uh, you know, a little lighter and uh, you know a little snazzier. So we just go to our uh, option box, and then usually you don't get that. So um, let's just go back. That was of course not planned, but the good thing is we are in. Uh, we're not shipping this product yet, uh, but we are just in uh, in beta. So hopefully we can. Let me just check. Um, I cannot even get to my options. That's very unfortunate. Um, So let's uh, just go back here to my materials. Just quickly paint this up again. And um, we'll just have to do with uh, with predefined materials. Uh, but this one here, this time I'm changing it up a little bit. Just grab this one here, go back to my plastics. And um, 
actually it was my soft touch. Get this one on the top. Get this one here on the bottom. Move it around. Bring the camera closer. Bring it at the top. Okay. Bring it on the back. See and um, go down to the middle. Black chrome on the bottom. Kind of a bummer that my options don't uh, show up because that kind of uh, defeats the purpose of the demo here because I want to show you some really cool new stuff, but may not be able to get to it. But anyway, we'll, we'll try this here uh, one more time. Just grab this uh, the edge and uh, now change our lighting as well. Uh, what did I have? To, I had this blue studio here. So what I can do though is, uh, and that is, if you see, that is working. I just close this uh, here. I can actually rotate my environment. Not only here, I'm rotating my, my camera. I'm moving my ma uh, camera. And then actually with, uh, with another hotkey, the control and the left mouse button, I can actually just move this, uh, the lighting around. And so get uh, uh, the light to actually hit in a different place. So move my camera uh, back around and again adjust the lighting. What I can also do is just uh, drop out the, uh, the background. So now we're just getting a, um, a regular just a gray background. And if I uh, were able to get my, to my toolbox without actually exiting, um, I will show you how to actually change uh, the background image. But what you can do, um, and that's one uh, beautiful thing here, is that I can go back and say, well, let's go to a backplate, and I can just uh, throw in like a studio environment. So now we're getting still the lighting effect, everything here. Uh, we're getting all the, uh, the materials. We get everything from the environment, but have actually placed it against um, a um, a studio background. That can be any photograph. You can actually pick, uh, take a picture of, uh, uh, in this particular case, of, uh, of a shelf of a workbench and place the knife right on there. And you'll see as, as soon as you let go, you actually have the perfect uh, image for you uh, ready to rest up right here in front of you. Now, just um, see whether we can actually do a couple more things here. Um, and at any point in time, you can also come in and just say, um, drop out the background. Let's see, maybe we can actually go uh, through here. But before I do this, I, um, I will save our file so we don't, just in case we have an unplanned uh, exit, uh, we just um, are quickly back to, um, to the start here. So let's just save anywhere. Okay. Let's give it a quick name. So we saved that. So let's see. Let's uh, view our. Um, let's see what we can actually do and edit the materials. And no, we can't do that. This is quite unfortunate. Apologize for that. With yesterday's build, everything worked just uh, just great. Um, unfortunately, not today. Let's see. We can actually take this one here. Interesting. Wow. Open recent. And we should be seeing our models. It's kind of strange what I'm getting here, but okay. Let's try this again. There we go. That looks a little better. Let's see whether we can actually get this here. In this particular case, this actually works. Okay. Now, maybe we can actually do this. Um, very unfortunate. Okay. Let's see. Um, go. Let's just show the desktop icons here, bring my mess back, but uh, quickly do this. Maybe if we do it a different way, um, we can 
get there quickly. Try and import this geometry here. Okay. Let's see whether we have more luck now. There we go. That's uh, what I wanted to see. So go back to our materials. But now you should be uh, experts in applying materials here. Uh, inside of uh, inside of Keyshot 2, we take our uh, soft touch again, make the exact same thing right here. Okay, take the soft touch here, up to the front, move my object around, and now bring it also uh, back to my metals. Uh, take up my steel here. Again, okay, perfect. There we go. And uh, if we love the blue light here, there we go. Perfect. Now, the beautiful thing about my options here is now all new. Uh, my options dialog basically allows me to control the overall scene, uh, where I can actually just hide now individual parts, uh, which makes it actually really powerful. Just uh, quickly, just looking inside of it. Um, and of course, I can also hide the entire part if I want. It really comes in handy when I have multiple parts of the object. I edit my materials right here. We get there to in a second, and my environment that I wanted to show. So here, we, everything that I showed you with hotkeys can also be accomplished here in uh, in real time, just uh, moving these um, sliders around, which gives you then uh, total fine control uh, over uh, over your image. So what I would like to do is I want to brighten this up a little bit. So I'm just going to increase the contrast here just a tad bit here. So maybe like a 1.7, 1.8. So get this uh, effect here. So this looks pretty good. Then I'm uh, just going to go and turn off the environment I've shown you. So it gives me a white background. What I'm actually going to do now is um, give this a little bit of a like a, a darker background. Okay. So now we're just uh, dealing with like a, a solid color here. And I can turn off like my ground reflection. You know, so you give it a subtle ground reflection. What's really cool here is that, I mean, there are many things uh, that uh, the Keyshot 2 actually delivers, but one of uh, my personal favorites, and, uh, you know, Kyle even told me uh, just to do this one thing, uh, to really, that's the thing, just for him, it would be, um, it, it would be uh, reason enough uh, for him to uh, to upgrade, actually, to, to Keyshot 2. So I'll, I'll take you up for it, Kyle. Uh, and that's the, uh, the basic the ability to apply labels. So we'll show you that. Not that this wasn't possible in Keyshot 1.9. You could always do that through the texture. But um, in this particular case, what we have done, we have developed a brand new labeling system. So we we'll just double click here on the material. So this is our uh, metallic paint that we have here. And now what we got to do is uh, we go to our label tab, say add. Um, and uh, then you can actually browse to any kind of label that you may have. So it can be a JPEG, a PNG, a TIFF file. Um, if you, especially when it comes to labels, you want to make sure that it has the transparency built in. Uh, so you really only see the logo. So I'm just uh, have a little folder prepared here for this demo. Let's bring in this uh, to my T-Spines folder. And uh, for our friends here, got the logo from T-Spines. Apply this first. Okay, so the first thing is you don't quite see it yet, but the first thing what you've got to do is just move label. You see it already here in the preview, T-Spline's logo. Uh, now you're in that move label mode, and watch this. Now we just actually move this label right here on this uh, on our surface. And by default, what's really cool about it, by default it's called a normal projection. Um, so what that actually means is, um, as you can see, as I'm moving this uh, this object around, I can actually move this over the entire surface. And this, of course, is, is, is kind of gently curved. But even when I get um, you know to the edge here, notice how actually my my logo actually stays with the contour of the surface. So this is extremely powerful now because you don't really need any other projection type when it comes to this um, this kind of uh, logo placement. All you got to do is just interactively move it around. And then what we can do is, uh, after we have it in position, what we can do is actually we can uh, change the angle. So, you know, rotate around to our liking here. Something 
like that. And then uh, we can also change the intensity, for example, if we want to make it a little brighter. Also works quite nicely here. And then, again, if you just decide, hey, I want to move this, you know, then, of course, everything will be maintained. Move that over, maybe make it a little bigger. It also maintains that aspect ratio. All these things, um, you know, that we were able to do before, but now much easier, much quicker. The one thing that you weren't able to do is what if you wanted to add a second label to um, this to the surface. So simply, what you do is um, you say go back to add, and now we actually take the, uh, the key shot icon. Same thing as the PNG uh, file, and um, so that has the transparency built in. And then we just uh, stick it right here, and we're doing the exact same thing. Maybe this is uh, a little bit too big. And there we go. There we have it. Now, another cool thing what we can actually do, so uh, we have now two logos here. What if I actually wanted to, to move this you know, over these multiple surfaces here? For example, one great thing that we can actually do is um, just copy and um, so we can actually go in here and say copy the material and then we paste it but we actually link the material right here you know and then maybe we also copy the material one more time and we link it um, now over here so we have this all metallic painting so one great thing also because you have all the sliders here notice how I actually can in interactively change um, my, my index for refraction, so that actually will uh, change the, uh, the reflectivity. But uh, even more powerful is kind of like the metal coverage. So what will happen is I increase the slider. Notice how the yellow actually takes over now and gives me a much stronger um, influence uh, of the metallic paint over here of the entire surface. So, that's so when I change that back, I can dial that down all the way down to zero. And now I just have a solid red paint similar to what we have seen uh, inside of Rhino. So if we like prefer that. So let's leave that for a second. And then even more powerful, let's go back to our labels. And you can see we can actually just pick the labels that we actually want to uh, move. And just maybe we just take the piece by logo now and move this label. And now I actually see how I can actually move this whole thing over the entire surface here. And again, powerful. See how the normal projection actually works now and how it um, nicely just wraps over the contours here uh, on the bottom of the three form surface. So extremely powerful tool and um, you know gives you a lot of flexibility here. Right. And then, of course, we have uh, you know many other things that we have added uh, to the tool itself. Well, one one thing that I'm uh, particularly proud of is also um, the ability to uh, manipulate your cameras interactively. Let's say we have actually the uh, kind of like the angle determined here. Um, and what if I just wanted to bring up my camera a little bit? So maybe just uh, change the inclination here. So basically, I'm just moving it up. You know, and just really from the same position out. You know, just basically. Uh, uh, m moving it up of the, on the incline here, or just bring it all the way down. Then I can also just rotate it around the y-axis without dis uh, disturbing anything else. So this just gives you the beautiful uh, control over um, you know, your camera, rather than having just to rely on your, um, on your mouse button uh, and your mouse buttons to actually do that, and your hotkeys. And also new, uh, what's also fantastic, is the, the true orthographic camera. So sometimes if you just really want to have a, a 2D uh, view, but in a photographic representation, then we can actually just go in here and just uh, have a perfect um, uh, orthographic camera. So before that, we actually approximate that always in, in focal length. And then what we can actually do is we could actually go back and say, well, hey, you know what? Actually, this material, I don't quite like it, but maybe instead of a metallic taint, what if we actually swapped out uh, the, uh, the material underneath and made it metal. So now, of course, what you see is it's just like the super reflective uh, material that uh, is a true metal with uh, you know red color. That's what we can 
could do now is actually come in and uh, make this a little rougher here. I know exactly why this is actually not showing up. Um, something we also have to fix. Go quickly to our preferences. Set orders. Show it in general. Save. Go back here. There we go. So now, there we go. Trying to see what we have here. Make this a um, like a little gray material here, gray metal. Maybe it's too rough. Just very gently. And everything now happening absolutely interactively. And last but not least, and I'm going to close with this one here. Let's go out to out of the autographic camera here. You can see how it snaps back into the perspective camera. The last thing I want to show you here when it comes to materials, you can actually apply a bump map. Um, and uh, for example, use the one that is given into the into the scene, or we just actually click um, and uh, take something else. Um, yeah, oftentimes I like to just to show what's actually possible here. Let's take something rather extreme. Now we just change the scale. Make this rather small here. And maybe change the height here. So within a matter of, uh, of minutes, obviously, here, without the crashes, uh, for which, once again, I apologize, you can actually make something extremely powerful here. And then can still go back and actually say, hey, if I don't bump that and uh, you know, want to change, for example, the mapping here, uh, just go to like a box map uh, and maybe scale this up now a little bit. So I see that. So you see um, what I've just done. Or then come back and say, hey, um, you know, in the end, I don't actually want this. Because uh, what if we actually did that and uh, made a glass out of it? So we can even do that. So now, what I've done, notice how also the logos are actually staying right here. I make this uh, add some thickness to the glass. And so now we can actually see through the object. We have the bump map applied. We have all of our labels applied here to just stay with the object. Uh, and with the material, and then I'll uh, just uh, make it a little brighter, um, add some of those uh, the indirect illumination, what it's called, that basically allows the, the light to bounce back. Okay, go back to our material. Um, And then maybe in the label, when it comes to that, just change the depth um, here. And so when I change actually the depth, then it will not uh, bleed through onto the other surface here. Let's try this. There we go. And now, it's taken a more, uh, more than just uh, a couple of seconds, but I hope I gave you an, an interesting overview of uh, Keisha too with uh, the little hiccups that I'm experiencing here. But so we just let that sit, res up, and just uh, enjoy the beautiful view. And um, yeah, I'll hand it over uh, back to Matt so we can um, answer a couple more questions. Okay. Well, great. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, and thanks everyone for coming to today's webinar. Um, we uh, we went a little bit over a half hour, but as you can see with both T splines and Keyshaw, they're they're tools that you can very quickly get to a shape that's that's almost what you want it, and then you can just tinker and tinker and and fine tune. Um, as long as you want to, and, it, and it's very easy to, to make a lot of iterations with both of those tools. So um, you can download a free trial of T-Splines and Keyshot at our respective websites. You can see them here on my screen. And we hope that you'll um, all take advantage of that. 
Um, so now we've had a few questions coming in during the webinar, and we'll just take some time now to answer these questions. Um, I think maybe what I'll do first is try to field more of the key shot questions and then um, go back to T-splines. So, Thomas, I'll make you the presenter again in case uh, you want to show anything else. Um, just some questions here about key shot. Um, let's see, is uh, there... There's one, I mean, if, if you don't mind, I just... Yeah, go ahead. Chad Holton, if you're still on the line, great to see you, Chad. Chad is actually, um, I hope I'm not uh, telling too much, he's not a Rhino user yet, and uh, not a T-Spline user, if, as far as I know. He's a, a fantastic uh, pro engineer user, and he's actually has been uh, labeled, the, the key, he's a great hypershot and T-Shot user, and uh, he has been labeled um, the, the king of casting, I think is his title. But uh, his question is, uh, will the new ground plane handle caustics? And the, uh, the answer uh, to that is uh, yes. And all you need to do is um, just go, and by the way, chat is also in our uh, beta program. It's really helpful here. All you need to go is just uh, go to the ground indirect illumination uh, chat, um, and that will actually turn this on. And you'll see actually how now the light actually falls through the glass right here and then onto the ground plane. So there's, again, I have no other ground plane here. That's just coming out of the environment uh, with no additional geometry. So um, that's, the, that's the answer to that. There we go. Chad Holton said thanks. Chad, yeah, it's still online. Perfect, Chad. Thank you. Uh, about the lights here, Antonio Turiello. Um, oh, OK. Uh, you can, but uh, I just want to say to that also, in addition, uh, what we have, if I just double click on here, on the, on the button in the back here, um, we have a new material here, it's called emissive, uh, so that will actually allow you uh, to also just um, have light emitting, so see, notice what I'm, it's, it's definitely, there's a lot going on now, uh, right, and so this, uh, on my poor laptop, it takes a little bit of time, but what I've done is actually uh, turned this into an emissive material, so now this, uh, as you can see also here on the ground, this acts now as a light source and will truly emit light into the scene as well. So, uh, depth of field, yes, uh, that's also there. Um, you know, that has always been there, just camera, uh, just depth of field uh, right here on the bottom. Got a, a small screen, and uh, right here, just enable, you know, and then just, uh, you just pick your focal point. Uh, let's say right here on the front, and uh, so everything will actually blur, and the focus will just stay on the front of the object here as well. Um, any symmetry in labeling? Uh, yes, there there is as well. Um, so this pinching in the bubble would leave see the mapping control. Well, we can of course dive, dive uh, really deeply here, but. Um, Okay, I think um, I, I give it back to you, Pat, because that's all I'm seeing for now, because everything else I'm just looking through is, uh, yeah, and it's my, Kyle, you, you're great. Hey, Matt, you better watch out because I might hire Kyle. He's, uh, he's perfect. He's always trained here on Keyshot. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, give it, I'll give it back to you, Matt. Uh, if there's anything We're available for parties, bar mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs> No, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking, um, uh, you know, taking the lead here and asking all of these. So, perfect. Okay, um, great. Kyle, I don't know if you've had a chance to look through the different T-spines questions. I think we've answered most of them just typing. Is there any that you um, wanted to take a few minutes to demo? Um, let's see. The there was a question on the on a. Um, uh, surface from curves, and I think that would probably be best addressed in a in a separate webinar. Um, the next, um, I, I'm I'm a lazy sod, and I love this append face workflow because it's so easy. But I will uh, break out of my box a little bit for the next one, and and show some other ways to do this. So um, addressing the surface from curves question. Um, uh, Gabe, we'll we'll address that in a in a separate webinar, and uh, that'll that'll force me to uh, up my game. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Kyle, there was one question about throwing uh, 
some sort of uh, curvature analysis on a T-spline. Oh, sure. Let's see if we can find that one. Um, yeah, can you do a sort of curvature, chrome, curvature comb across the T-spine model for doing some quick curvature analysis? Yeah. Um, yes. All right, let me clean up my window a little bit. Everybody seeing that? Yeah, yeah, you're live. All right. Um, so, uh, let's see. All right, so let me grab the T-spline surface. And... We'll just take a quick look at that. Oops, that's my directions. The curvature cone. If I change the color of this so that you can actually see it. Whee! And we bring this down a little bit. Turn the density up. If you notice, along these edges and stuff, you know, this is this is really nice continuity. As it's going through there. And my scale's really huge here for these edges, but if I bring this down and zoom in. It doesn't like the tool, the curvature continuity tool doesn't like this T-spline's corner here. Um, let me see what it looks like on the rhino surface. Um, yeah, and Kyle, there's a few there's a few advanced commands. I don't know if we want to show them here, but to to set the star smoothness on that star point to kind of drive that smoothness a little bit more. Ah, uh, yes. Um, yeah, if you just change that the star smoothness to maybe 5 or something. And that will that will as you as you toggle with that that will have an effect on that. Um, yeah, one other thing also, this is another advanced thing, if you go at, um, you, you, can, you can select which of the isocurves you have turned on for the uh, curvature comb as well in, in the T-splines uh, menu. Because so, the T-spline doesn't have like a global UV, but if you go to the T-splines menu, Kyle, um, not, right. the not the options, just the menu, yeah. um, the, I think it's utilities, um, the very bottom, you can select the edges for the curvature graph. And so that just lets you, if, if you only want it, like one of them to be on, then um, so that just can... lets you focus in on one part of the model. Right. Okay. Um, let's see, other, other questions. The, the one thing about this, for anybody who's worried about, you know, continuity or anything like that, the, the continuity that you can get out of this is so much better than the continuity that you could build yourself um, unless you are a ridiculously better modeler than I am. Um, getting something this smooth um, using traditional Rhino tools, it's, it's achievable, you can do it, but it's, it's tough and you're not going to do it in, you know, seven or eight minutes. The, the other thing about this is the fidelity on this data, if you're going downstream to Pro-E, if you're going downstream to SolidWorks, if you're going downstream to Katia or anything like that, this data transfers beautifully. And um, I've had really, really good success with taking models that I've built and, and getting them down. Whereas if you were to build this with traditional tools, you would have to really, really be um, particular about how you built it in order to get the data transfer to work successfully. I don't know how much experience everybody has with transferring stuff from 
from a NURBS package into a solids package or a surfacing package into a solids package, but it, it has its challenges and, and there's some modeling rules that you need to be fairly strict with in order to get that transfer to happen easily. In, in T-splines, as long as you're not doing something crazy where you've got you know, UV swapping on top of each other or anything like that, you know, or some stuff turned inside out or, or bow tying or crazy stuff like that that would be bad modeling practice anyways, the model almost falls into Pro E and can be shelled. And you know, I mean, it's just it's a it's a really really great uh, front end for getting into that kind of stuff. Any other questions I can help with? Matt, I think I'll probably punch it back to you, and uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Okay. Well, sounds great. Um, oh, here, here's one final question. Can you take a T-spline, convert it to NURBS, then apply a radius to it without using uh, smooth something? Um, yeah, that's if you want to get an exact radius on a T-spline, that's exactly what I would do is convert it to NURBS um, and then just apply an exact radius there. And I can I can send you some examples, uh, Joseph, after the webinar of, of instances where you where we've combined the smooth T spine with an exact curvature in NURBS. So um, okay, well great. Well thanks everyone for coming and um, we'll uh, we'll talk to you later. Fantastic. Thanks everybody. Thank you.